the specific type of study permit you need depends on the type and duration of your study program. Here are the main types of study permits in Canada and their purposes. Student Visa for Canada Navigating the path to studying in Canada Explanation of the different types of student visas available in Canada and their purposes. Canada offers several types of student visas, which are officially known as study permits. These permits allow international students to study at designated learning institutions in Canada. The specific type of study permit you need depends on the type and duration of your study program. Here are the main types of study permits in Canada and their purposes. Regular study permit. Purpose. This is the most common type of study permit and is for international students who plan to attend a designated learning institution, such as a university, college, or language school, in Canada for a program that is longer than six months. Designated Learning Institution, DLI, Restricted Study Permit. Purpose. This permit is for international students who wish to attend a designated learning institution in Canada for a program that is shorter than six months. These programs do not qualify for regular study permits. Post-graduation work permit, PGWP. Purpose, after completing an eligible program at a designated learning institution in Canada, international students with a valid study permit may apply for a PGWP. This permit allows them to work in Canada for a specific duration to gain Canadian work experience. The length of the PGWP depends on the length of the program completed, with a maximum of three years. Co-op work permit. Purpose, international students enrolled in academic programs with a mandatory co-op, internship, or work experience component may require a co-op work permit to participate in these work opportunities. This permit is typically issued alongside the regular study permit. Off-campus work permit. Purpose. International students with a valid study permit who are enrolled in full-time academic programs at designated learning institutions may be eligible for an off-campus work permit. This permit allows them to work part-time, up to 20 hours per week, during their study and full-time during scheduled breaks. Study permit for minor children. Purpose. This permit is for minor children of parents who hold a valid study or work permit in Canada. It allows them to attend primary or secondary school in Canada. Student Direct Stream, SDS. Purpose. The SDS is a streamlined study permit application process available to international students from certain countries, including India, China, the Philippines, and others who meet specific eligibility criteria. It aims to expedite the study permit application process. When applying for a study permit in Canada, it's essential to carefully review the specific requirements and eligibility criteria associated with each type of permit. Additionally, students should ensure they have the necessary supporting documents, including a letter of acceptance from a designated learning institution, proof of funds to cover their expenses, and a clean medical and criminal record, among others. Immigration regulations and policies may change, so it's advisable to consult the official website of Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada, IRCC, or seek guidance from the nearest Canadian embassy or consulate for the most up-to-date information. The General Eligibility Criteria for a Canadian Student Visa The eligibility criteria for a Canadian student visa, also known as a study permit, can vary depending on the specific circumstances and the type of program you are applying for. However, here is a general outline of the common eligibility requirements. Acceptance by a designated learning institution, DLI. You must first apply and be accepted by a Canadian DLI, which includes universities, colleges, and other educational institutions authorized by the Canadian government. Proof of sufficient funds. You need to demonstrate that you have enough money to cover your tuition fees, living expenses, and return transportation without the need for working in Canada during your studies. 
you may need to provide bank statements or a letter of financial support. Clean criminal record. You must not have a criminal record. In some cases, you may need to provide a police clearance certificate. Good health. You may be required to undergo a medical examination to prove that you are in good health. In some cases, you may need to purchase health insurance in Canada. Intend to leave Canada after studies. You should demonstrate your intention to leave Canada upon completing your studies. This can be shown through ties to your home country, such as family, property, or a job offer. Passport. You must have a valid passport that will cover the duration of your stay in Canada. Payment of application fees. You need to pay the application processing fees and, if applicable, the biometric fee. Language proficiency. If your program of study is in English or French, you may need to provide proof of language proficiency through standardized tests like IELTS or TOEFL. Biometrics. In some cases, you may be required to provide biometric data, fingerprints and photographs. Study plan. You may be asked to provide a statement of purpose outlining your study plan and explaining why you chose Canada for your education. Visa interview, if required. Some applicants may be asked to attend an interview at a Canadian consulate or embassy in their home country. Additional requirements. Depending on your country of origin, your program of study, and other factors, there may be additional requirements or documentation needed. It's essential to check the official website of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, IRCC, or consult with the Canadian Embassy or Consulate in your home country for the most up-to-date and specific information on the student visa application process and eligibility criteria. Details of financial proof and demonstrate the ability to cover tuition fees, living expenses, and return transportation. Demonstrating your ability to cover tuition fees, living expenses, and return transportation is an important part of the application process for studying abroad. You'll need to provide a comprehensive financial proof to the institution or authorities to assure them that you can support yourself during your studies. Here's a breakdown of the components you should include in your financial proof. Tuition fees. Provide a clear statement or acceptance letter from the educational institution detailing the exact cost of tuition fees for your program. Include information on any scholarships, grants, or financial aid you've been awarded. Living expenses. Calculate your estimated living expenses for the duration of your studies. This typically includes costs for accommodation, food, transportation, health insurance, books, and personal expenses. Be specific and provide a detailed breakdown of these expenses. Return transportation. Include the estimated cost of a round-trip ticket to and from your home country or the study destination. You can get quotes from airlines or travel agencies to provide a more accurate figure. Bank statements. Provide recent, official bank statements that clearly show your financial stability. These should cover a sufficient period to demonstrate your ability to cover the expenses. The statement should include your name, account number, and the bank's name and address. Ideally, the statement should be in English or officially translated. Sponsorship letters. If your funding comes from sources other than personal savings, e.g., scholarships, family support, provide official sponsorship letters or documents from your sponsors. These letters should outline the terms and conditions of the sponsorship and the amount of financial support they are providing. Affidavit of support. Some countries or institutions may require you to submit an affidavit of support. This is a legally binding document in which a sponsor guarantees to financially support you during your studies. Ensure the affidavit is signed and notarized. 
proof of income or employment. If you or your sponsor is employed, provide pay stubs, employment letters, or income tax returns to verify your income. Include any additional sources of income, if applicable. Currency conversion. If your bank statement or financial documents are in a currency different from the one in which your tuition and living expenses are quoted, provide a currency conversion statement to demonstrate that you have enough in your local currency to cover these costs. Cover letter. Write a cover letter summarizing your financial proof. Mention the purpose of your stay, your study plans, and express your commitment to adhering to the financial responsibilities. Remember to check the specific requirements of the institution or country where you plan to study, as they may have their own guidelines for financial proof. Providing comprehensive, accurate, and up-to-date financial proof is crucial for a successful student visa application or admission to an educational institution abroad. Discussion of language proficiency requirements and language tests like IELTS, TOEFL, or CELPIP. Language proficiency requirements and tests like IELTS, TOEFL, and CELPIP are essential components in assessing an individual's ability to communicate effectively in English, particularly for non-native English speakers. These tests are commonly used for various purposes, including education, immigration, and employment. Let's discuss each of these tests in more detail. IELTS, International English Language Testing System. IELTS is one of the most widely accepted English language proficiency tests globally. It assesses a person's English language skills in four key areas, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. IELTS scores are reported on a scale from 0 to 9, with a score of 9 being the highest proficiency level. IELTS is commonly used for study abroad applications, immigration to English-speaking countries, and employment in multinational organizations. TOEFL, Test of English as a Foreign Language TOEFL primarily evaluates the English language skills of non-native speakers who want to study in English-speaking countries especially in the United States. It assesses reading, listening, speaking, and writing skills. TOEFL scores are reported on a scale from 0 to 120, with each section scored out of 30. It is widely recognized by universities and colleges in the United States and is also used for employment and immigration purposes. CELPIP, Canadian English Language Proficiency Index Program. CELPIP is specifically designed for individuals planning to immigrate to Canada, although it is also used for employment and academic purposes within the country. It assesses listening, reading, writing, and speaking skills. CELPIP scores are reported on a scale from 1 to 12, with a higher score indicating better proficiency. The test is recognized by the Canadian government for immigration applications. The language proficiency requirements and the scores needed vary depending on the institution, organization, or immigration program. Different countries, universities, and employers may have specific score requirements for each of these tests. It's crucial for individuals to check the specific requirements of their intended destination or institution before taking any of these tests. These tests aim to ensure that individuals have the language skills necessary to succeed in academic, professional, and social settings in an English-speaking environment. They are standardized and reliable measures of a person's English language proficiency, providing a fair and consistent way to assess language skills. Preparing for these tests often involves practice exams, study materials, and even language courses to help individuals achieve their desired scores. Explanation of the need for a medical examination and clearance for a Canadian student visa. A medical examination and clearance are required for a Canadian student visa for several important reasons. Public health and safety, Canada places a high priority on public health and safety. To protect the health of its residents, the Canadian government requires all individuals seeking to enter the country for an extended period, such as students, 
to undergo a medical examination. This is done to identify and prevent the entry of individuals who may have contagious diseases that could pose a risk to the Canadian population. Healthcare costs, Canada has a publicly funded healthcare system, and the government wants to ensure that newcomers do not become a burden on the system. By conducting medical examinations, they can identify individuals with pre-existing medical conditions that may require expensive healthcare services. This helps prevent excessive costs to the Canadian healthcare system and consistent way to assess language skills. Preparing for these tests often involves practice exams, study materials, and even language courses to help individuals achieve their desired scores. Preventing the spread of diseases, medical examinations help in identifying and preventing the entry of individuals carrying infectious diseases, such as tuberculosis or HIV. By screening applicants, Canada can take necessary measures to manage and control these diseases, reducing the risk of transmission within the country. Protecting students, a medical examination also serves to protect the well-being of students themselves. It ensures that students entering Canada are healthy and do not have any underlying medical conditions that may hinder their ability to study or require medical treatment while in the country. Visa eligibility, a medical examination is one of the eligibility requirements for certain Canadian visas, including the study permit. Failing to undergo this examination and obtain medical clearance can result in the rejection of a student's visa application. To obtain a Canadian student visa, applicants are typically required to undergo a medical examination by an approved panel physician designated by the Canadian government. The physician will assess the applicant's medical history, conduct a physical examination, and perform any necessary laboratory tests, including chest x-rays and blood tests. If the applicant is found to be in good health and does not pose a public health risk, they will receive medical clearance, which is a crucial step in the visa application process. It's important for prospective international students to be aware of the specific requirements and procedures for the medical examination as part of their Canadian student visa application to ensure a smooth and successful process. Discussion of the need for biometric data submission and police clearance certificate for a Canadian student visa. Submitting biometric data and obtaining a police clearance certificate are two important requirements when applying for a Canadian student visa. These measures are in place to ensure the safety and security of Canada and its residents, as well as to assess the admissibility of international students. Let's delve into the need for these two components. Biometric data submission. Biometric data refers to fingerprint and photograph information collected from visa applicants. The need for biometric data submission is driven by several factors. A. Enhanced security. Biometrics help verify the identity of the visa applicant, making it harder for individuals with fraudulent intentions to enter the country. B. Preventing identity theft. Biometrics reduce the chances of identity theft, which can be a significant issue in immigration processes. C. Border control. Canadian authorities use biometric data to monitor and control entry and exit of foreign nationals. This is crucial for maintaining the security of the Canadian borders. D. International cooperation. Many countries, including Canada, have adopted biometric data collection as a global standard for enhanced border security. This ensures a consistent approach and cooperation with international partners. Police clearance certificate. A police clearance certificate, PCC, is a document issued by law enforcement agencies certifying that an individual has no criminal record or a history of criminal activity. The need for a PCC is driven by the following reasons. A. Public safety. Canada places a high priority on the safety of its residents. Requiring a PCC ensures that individuals with a history of criminal activity are thoroughly screened before being granted a student visa. B. Admissibility. Individuals with certain criminal convictions or outstanding charges may be inadmissible to Canada. A PCC helps in assessing the applicant's admissibility. C. Immigration integrity. 
a PCC adds to the integrity of the immigration system by ensuring that individuals who may pose a risk to Canadian society are not granted visas. D. International obligations. Canada, like many countries, has international agreements and obligations related to security and admissibility. Requiring a PCC aligned with these obligations. In summary, the need for biometric data submission and a police clearance certificate for a Canadian student visa is primarily about ensuring the safety and security of Canada, its residents, and the integrity of its immigration system. These measures help to identify and assess potential risks while promoting international cooperation and adherence to global standards for border security and admissibility. Applicants should be prepared to comply with these requirements as part of the visa application process. Provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to apply for a Canadian student visa. Certainly. Here is a step-by-step -step guide on how to apply for a Canadian student visa. Step 1. Determine your eligibility before you start the application process. Ensure you meet the eligibility criteria for a Canadian student visa. You must have been accepted by a designated learning institution, DLI, in Canada. Prove that you have enough funds to cover your tuition fees, living expenses, and return transportation, and have a clean criminal record. Step 2. Gather required documents. Collect all the necessary documents for your application. These documents typically include a valid passport, the acceptance letter from a Canadian DLI, proof of sufficient funds, passport-sized photographs, immigration medical examination, IME, results, if required, police clearance certificate, statement of purpose, academic documents, transcripts and certificates, English or French language proficiency test results, e.g., IELTS, TOEFL, family information form, digital fingerprints, if applicable, visa application forms, IMM 1294 and IMM 5645. Step 3. Pay the application fee visit the official website of the Government of Canada to check the current visa application fees. You can pay these fees online through the Citizenship and Immigration Canada, CIC, website. Step 4. Create an online account go to the Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada, IRCC, website and create an online account, MyCIC. This account will be used to submit your application and track its status. Step 5. Complete the application form log into your MyCIC account and fill out the study permit application form, IMM 1294. Be sure to provide accurate information and double-check all details before submitting. Step 6. Upload required documents after completing the application form. Upload all the necessary documents as per the checklist provided by the IRCC. Ensure that the documents are clear and legible. Step 7. Biometrics appointment, if required, if requested. Schedule and attend a biometrics appointment at a local application support center, ASC, or visa application center, VAC. Biometrics include fingerprinting and a photograph. Step 8. Attend an interview, if required, in some cases, you may be required to attend an interview at your local Canadian embassy, consulate, or visa application center. Be prepared to answer questions about your study plans and financial situation. Step 9. Pay the biometrics fee, if required, if you need to provide biometrics, pay the fee as instructed by the IRCC. Step 10. Submit your application. Review your application carefully to ensure that all required documents and information are complete and accurate. Once you're satisfied, submit your application through your MyCIC account. Step 11. Wait for processing after submission. Your application will be reviewed by the IRCC. Processing times may vary, so check the IRCC website for current estimates. Step 12. Provide additional information, if requested. If the IRCC requests additional information or documents, be prepared to provide them promptly. 
Step 13, receive your port of entry, POE, letter if your application is approved, you will receive a port of entry, POE, letter. This letter is necessary for your entry into Canada. Step 14, prepare for arrival before leaving for Canada, make travel arrangements, secure accommodation, and ensure you have all necessary documents, including your passport, visa, and POE letter. Step 15, arrive in Canada when you arrive in Canada, present your POE letter to the immigration officer. You may be required to undergo a medical examination at this point. That's it. You should now be ready to start your studies in Canada. Remember to check the latest requirements and procedures on the official IRCC website as they may change over time. Tips and best practices for a successful student visa application for Canada. Applying for a student visa to study in Canada can be a complex process, but with careful planning and attention to detail, you can improve your chances of success. Here are some tips and best practices to help you with your Canadian student visa application. Start early. Begin the application process well in advance of your intended study start date. Processing times can vary, so apply at least two to three months before your program begins. Choose the right program and institution, ensure you have been accepted into a designated learning institution, DLI, in Canada. Check the DLI list on the official Government of Canada website. Gather all required documents, make a checklist of the necessary documents, which typically include a valid passport, letter of acceptance, proof of funds, visa application forms, and passport-sized photos. Verify specific requirements on the official immigration website or the website of the Canadian consulate or embassy in your country. Financial proof, prove your ability to cover tuition fees, living expenses, and return transportation. This can be through bank statements, sponsorship letters, or a guaranteed investment certificate, GIC. Complete the application form, fill out the appropriate study permit application form accurately and completely. Double check for any errors or omissions. Pay the application fee, pay the non-refundable visa application processing fee and any other required fees. Payment can usually be made online, and it's essential to keep proof of payment. Biometrics and medical exams, check if you need to provide biometrics or undergo a medical examination. Follow the instructions given, and complete these requirements as needed. Letter of explanation, write a clear and concise letter explaining your intent to study in Canada, your plans for returning home after your studies, and how you will support yourself financially. Language proficiency, if required, submit proof of English or French language proficiency through standardized tests like IELTS or TOEFL. Police clearance certificate, if necessary, obtain a police clearance certificate or background check from your home country or any other place you have lived in the last 10 years. Attend an interview, you may be required to attend an interview at your local Canadian embassy or consulate. Be prepared to discuss your study plans and financial situation. Visa Application Center, VAC Some countries have VACs where you may need to submit your application in person. Check for the nearest VAC and make an appointment if required. Proof of ties to your home country, demonstrate strong ties to your home country, such as family, property, or a job, to show your intention to return after your studies. Keep copies of all documents, make photocopies of all your documents and keep them in a safe place. You may be asked to provide these at various stages of the process. Application tracking, after submitting your application, keep track of its status online or through the VAC. Be honest and thorough, provide accurate and truthful information in your application and interviews. Falsifying information can lead to visa denial or even future inadmissibility to Canada. Professional advice. Consider seeking professional advice or consulting with an immigration lawyer or consultant, especially if your case is complex or you have concerns about your eligibility. 
Remember that visa processing times and requirements can change, so always check the official government website for the most up-to-date information. Being well-prepared and thorough in your application will increase your chances of obtaining a Canadian student visa and having a successful study experience in Canada. Summarize key points for Canada student visa and encourage prospective students. Key points for Canada student visa. High-quality education, Canada is renowned for its world-class educational institutions and a diverse range of programs, making it an attractive destination for international students. Study permits, to study in Canada, you typically need a study permit. It's essential to apply for this permit early and provide necessary documentation, including an acceptance letter from a Canadian school. Financial support, you must demonstrate your ability to cover tuition fees, living expenses, and return transportation. This could involve showing proof of funds or scholarships. Medical exam and police clearance, in some cases, you might need to undergo a medical exam and obtain a police clearance certificate before applying for a study permit. Language proficiency, if your program is in English or French, you may need to prove your language proficiency through standardized tests like IELTS or TOEFL. Biometrics and interviews, depending on your country of origin, you may be required to provide biometrics and attend an interview at your local Canadian embassy or consulate. Post-graduation work opportunities, Canada offers post-graduation work permits, allowing you to gain valuable work experience after completing your studies. Immigration pathways, Canada provides various immigration pathways for international students, including the express entry system, provincial nominee programs, and more. Encouragement for prospective students. Quality of education, Canada's universities and colleges are known for their high-quality education, making it an excellent choice for academic and career growth. Cultural diversity, Canada is a diverse and welcoming country, providing a multicultural environment where students can learn and thrive. Safety and quality of life, Canada consistently ranks high for safety, healthcare, and overall quality of life, offering peace of mind to international students and their families. Work opportunities, with post-graduation work permits and various immigration pathways, Canada makes it easier for students to transition into the workforce and potentially become permanent residents. Adventure and natural beauty, Canada's stunning landscapes, from the Rocky Mountains to picturesque coastlines, offer ample opportunities for outdoor activities and exploration. Networking, studying in Canada allows you to build a global network of contacts fostering personal and professional relationships that can benefit your future career. English and French language skills. Gaining proficiency in English and or French can significantly enhance your career prospects and open doors to international opportunities. Scholarships and financial aid. Many Canadian institutions offer scholarships and financial aid to international students, helping alleviate the financial burden of studying abroad. In summary, Pursuing a student visa for Canada offers a gateway to a top-tier education, diverse cultural experiences, and a bright future with ample opportunities for personal and professional growth. Consider Canada as your destination for higher education and embark on an enriching journey. Thank you for watching my presentation on Canadian student visa. You're welcome. I'd be happy to provide feedback or answer any questions you have about this presentation on Canadian student visas in English and Urdu. Please feel free to contact us for more details, or ask any specific questions you may have at international222180 at gmail.com.